Sometimes you do things that are right and situations happen. Children, right now in Yeshua's name. 
Right now. 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 Right Chapter number six. We will start at verse number one. And we will speak from a subject of it's bigger than what you think. Amen. This is Second Kings chapter six, verse one. Amplified. Now the sons of the prophets said to Elisha. Look now, the place where we live near you is too small for us. Please let us go to the Jordan River and let each man take from there a beam for the building. And let us make a place there for ourselves where we may live. And he answered, Go. Then one said, Please be willing to go with your servants. So he answered, I shall go. So he went with them. And when they came to the Jordan, they cut down some of the trees. But it happened that as one was cutting down a beam, the axe head fell into the water. So we see here that these young brothers were following Elisha. They start out with saying the place is too small. They want to move and shift, but they want to move and shift for a purpose. It's not always about just moving for the sake of moving. They're moving and shifting for a purpose, not of themselves, but to establish something bigger than themselves. Okay. Come on, get to the Rest of verse 5. Uh -huh. And he cried out and said, Oh no, my master, it was borrowed. The Sometimes you do things that are right. And situations happen. It's not all the time that a devil is after you because a situation happened. All right, come on. Sometimes it's just circumstances. Things just happen. These young brothers who are prophetic, who were following one who was more wiser than they were in this office of the prophet. They're following him, they trust his guidance, they trust his understanding, they respect and understand that he's been with the Most High, he knows the Most High's voice, and yet they want to leave and go and establish something. But during the process of establishing, something happens. One thing I understand about dealing with in the Old Testament, it's very rare that you find them blaming the devil for things. Oftentimes we find ourselves blaming and having more demonology than proper theology. We have more conversation about the devil, where the devil did this, the devil did that. Sometimes it's just circumstance. In this case, they had an understanding that they were more victorious that be, because they were with the Most High than they were in anybody else tribes or demonic forces or any of those things. They didn't process it that way. Hey, come on. What happened? Do you read deep? Verse 6. The man of Yah said, where did it fall? He said it fell. There was a key reading. When he showed him the place, Elisha cut off a stick and threw it in there and made the iron axe head float. So it was an axe head. They needed this as a, this as a tool that they needed to build what they were trying to build. And this it was, it was very formidable. They needed this. They couldn't do it without this. And yet they processed it different. The first thing they did was they approached their leadership. They understood who they were following. They didn't make him a deity. They didn't make him one that, oh, well, he's the only one can hear from the most high. But the level of respect that they had right. to be able to follow him, to understand that this is a man. This is why you can't follow everybody. Everybody you're not assigned to be following. They're not following Alicia because he got a big name. 
They're not following him because they got massive crowds. They're not following him because of that. They're following him because they're guided by the same presence of the spirit that they have. They understand that there's something that Alicia has that's more greater than me. I'm young at this. I'm still trying to grow and develop. See, the disconnection that we've lost in our day and age, we think that we don't need the elders for anything. We think that we got it all together. All because we got a few crowds, we got a few people watching us online, we got a few followers, and now we think that we can just step out here and do it all on our own. They had a respect and a reverence for Alicia to come to him and say, hey, listen, we were trying to build this, but the axe handle broke. One thing about a leader who's following the most high, he knows how to tap into the spirit. He didn't make a decision based off of, oh, well, you know, all we have to do is, you know, somebody jump in the water and go get it. This is a teachable moment to show them you does an axe handle, this axe that's made of a substance that does not flow, is going to go to the bottom. This is all about a demonstration to show who they serve. This is bigger than a life show performing. This is bigger than anything else. He wants them to tap into who you're serving. You don't just follow me, you follow me. So you follow the most high through me. This is the same thing that Paul said. Follow me as I follow Christ. That's good. Come on, Bishop. Follow me. When I get off the path of Christ, then you get off the path. Right. Getting off right here. Elisha is showing a difference of demonstration. I don't care what. You say, we all need somebody that has more wisdom and knowledge in us than we should follow. You know why? Because there's things in life that people have experienced greater than us. We haven't experienced everything. But we need not to just follow anybody. We need to make sure that the people we're following is going to point us to the Father. Amen. Not worship me, but worship Him. Don't make me a deity. Don't fall down before me. I'm going to point you to the Mashiach. So read what it says. Verse 7, he uh -huh. said, pick it up for yourself. Go back to verse 6. Verse 6, the man of Yah said, What did he say? Where did it fall? He said, where did it fall? Come on, what did he say? When he showed him the place, Elisha cut off a stick and threw it in there and made the iron axe head float. Now, who in their right mind? Think about this. There's an axe head that's not made of wood that has sunk. Now, with your natural mind, the first thing that you would say is, go get the net. Go get the net. Cast the net down. Drag it up and we're going to get the axe out. Elisha cuts a tree down. He uses a device that floats to bring up something that doesn't float. The Most High is showing us that you can do the impossible Come on. only if you do it through Him. Right. Hallelujah. Anything is possible. He takes and cuts the wood. It falls in the water and it saves the unfoldable thing. You were dying in your sin. And yet the tree was cut down, fashioned, he got on it and brought you up out of hell. He brought you up out of hell. This is the reason why I say every time we step through that door, every time we open our eyes when we put our feet on the floor, single morning, we should be thanking God for waking us up. We should be thanking him for sending his son to redeem and die for us. Because we were an axe handle sinking. We were sinking in our sin. And yet the tree that don't sink. The tree that was minding its own business. The tree that was just in the woods doing what it's supposed to do because it was created to do such. The tree became a savior. 